here we go. And I forgot to record it at the beginning, but we're just did a brief overview of these two trips and how they overlap together. So um, that's going to be talked about in just a few moments. Uh, our, our travel company tour provider is called Imagine Tours and Travel based out of Lakeland, Florida. Rick Ricart is the owner. He's a second generation owner of the travel company. He's a friend. I've been to Israel with him a couple of times or in Israel with him a couple of times. I knew his father as well. And uh, Rick is a believer. He loves Jesus very much and loves to help people travel around the world. So it's a solid company. They treat people right. They're good with communication. Once you make that connection, you pick up the phone, call, you talk to a human. And uh, solid folks. So uh, I have been encouraging, you've all done this because I think all of you are registered for one or both tours, but I, I send this link to others as well. You need to throw in the HTTPS colon double slash, whatever that is said, in order for the link to work. You can't just do www. It's got to be the, the secure connection there. So you go to that link and enter in either one of the two tour codes. People can download a tour brochure, those kinds of things. You've all seen that. You all have that. But that's just in case you want to encourage other people to travel with us. Make sure they get the, the correct web address. <clears throat> All right, here's here's where we're going on the Israel only tour. Uh, we <clears throat> uh, arrive and, and depart from Tel Aviv, and then we're going to be traveling in a counterclockwise motion. We're going to head south on the first day. We're going to go from Tel Aviv down into Beersheba, which means seven wells, and one of those wells is Abraham's well. We will see that, and we will spend the night in that region, uh, and then we will go to, uh, on the way down to the Red Sea, we're going to stop at the Ramon Crater. It's the largest crater on Earth. It's a beautiful site. It's the Grand Canyon of the Middle East. We want to see that, and then we will head down to a lot, which is on the Red Sea, uh, we'll have enough time down there to snorkel in the Red Sea. There's an underwater observatory. It's like an aquarium, but it's not an aquarium. It's the actual Red Sea. So you go walk out under the pier into the building and you go down and you're looking out into the open Red Sea. It's just really an amazing place. Uh, spend the night there. And then we'll head up north a little bit to a place called Timna. Uh, that's where Solomon's copper mines were located. And we will see a full-size replica of the Wilderness Tabernacle. It's a fascinating site. We get to go inside. There's a guide that, that gives us the lecture about all the different functions of the tabernacle and so forth. It's an amazing experience. And then we drive up right through the Rift Valley there uh, up to the Dead Sea. We will spend the night on the, at a hotel at the Dead Sea right on the shore there. <clears throat> we'll have time to float on the Dead Sea. If you're not familiar with that experience, if you're not aware of it, it's uh, pretty crazy. It's pretty fun. Uh, the, the sailing content is so high uh, that it's you, you can't sink in it. And once we get into our itinerary Bible studies, we'll talk a little bit more about the Dead Sea, how it was formed and what it's like. It, it, you're so buoyant on the Dead Sea. You'll see a photo when we do this later on, of um, some of us who are floating on the on the water there, and we have boulders the size or the size of our head lying on our chest, and we're still floating. It is just an amazing, incredible experience. Uh, we'll go to Masada, which is a Jewish fortress uh, that was uh, a lot of history connected to that. We have scheduled a pre-sunrise hike up Masada for those who are adventurous and want to climb up Masada and watch the sunrise over the Dead Sea. That's a, an amazing experience. You've got the chops to climb. Um, do that. If not, start conditioning. It's it's a pretty intense climb. In fact, they, there's a, a path that goes up called the Snake Path. They close it at 9 o'clock in the morning because it just gets too hot, and it's it gets dangerous at that point. But early in the morning, to climb up and to watch the sunrise over the Dead Sea is, is, a, is a shot you got to take. It's amazing. We'll also go to En Gedi. This is where it's an oasis where David hid when King Saul was pursuing him. 
Uh, that's a beautiful place, lots of wildlife, lots of springs and fountains and pools and, and, and all of that. We want you to be aware of that. Uh, let's see. And then um, we'll go up to Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. That's a fascinating site to see. Up to Qasr al Yahud, this is where Jesus was baptized in, in the Jordan River where John did his baptisms. And we make that a spot that's available for anybody who wants to be baptized in the Jordan River. It's common for people who have already been baptized uh, to get baptized again, just because they want to do that in the Jordan River. I baptized James and Jill O'Rear in the Green River. Uh, <clears throat> and that was just an incredible experience because if you remember, we walked out of the river and there's a bunch, bunch of guys drinking and fishing. And uh, they saw us go, We I, I think we asked them if we could just have the river for a few minutes because we want to baptize these people. And they just all took their hats off and they just kind of bowed and were real respectful and everything. And then uh, it was uh, rather frigid. It was a little chilly in that river, but we got you wet, we got you baptized and that was fun. So that was that was a great moment. Uh, and then we'll head up all the way north. We'll spend the night at the Sea of Galilee. There's a hotel that we have that's right on the, on the shore, the Sea of Galilee. <clears throat> and every room has a full view of the sea. And you step out of the rooms uh, out into the pool area and you step just beyond the pool area and you're in the lake. I mean, we're as close to the Sea of Galilee as you can be. And it's just a beautiful spot in that region. We'll go to Capernaum, which was Jesus' adopted hometown. We'll go to Nazareth and to a place called Nazareth Village, uh, which is a reconstructed first century uh, experience where you can see buildings in the synagogue and what life was like in the first century there in Nazareth. It's, it's wonderful. We'll go to Megiddo, which is like Armageddon. Uh, we'll see the Valley of Armageddon. We'll go up onto uh, Mount Carmel, which is like where Megiddo is spelled on the map, and we'll have a chance to do a panoramic view of the Valley of Armageddon, which is incredible. Uh, go to Mount Gilboa, where Gideon Spring is located. That's also where Jonathan and his father, King Saul, were killed in battle. We'll go to Beit Shan, which is a Roman city, a Scythopolis, but it's also an ancient Old Testament city. Uh, Beit Shan when it was called Scythopolis, as I mentioned, was a Roman city. It was one of the only one of the Decapolis, the 10 Roman cities that's on the western side of the Jordan River. So it's a must-see, one of my favorite places to see over in that part of the world. And then we'll go over to Jerusalem, pick up the rest of the group. Uh, we'll go down to Joppa. This is where this is where the book of Acts, uh, part of the book of Acts occurred, where Peter saw the vision of the a sheet coming down with the unclean animals. <clears throat> he was told to rise, kill, and eat. And then some people from Caesarea came down and met him and brought Peter back up to Caesarea. And that's where the first non-Jewish convert to Christianity uh, lived. Philip the Evangelist lived there as well. Caesarea is a man-made port uh, built by Herod the Great dedicated, dedicated to Caesar. That's why it's called Caesarea. And then we'll come back down, spend the night on the Mediterranean Sea at a place called Netanya. Our hotel again is right on the uh, right on the sea of, uh, right on the Mediterranean Sea. So you can go down, you can swim, you can take a dip in the Mediterranean. And then those that are doing the Israel only tour, we bring them to the airport at Tel Aviv, and they head home. Those of us who are going to stick around and who are a part of the Axon location tour. Uh, fly to Athens, Greece, and we go from there. So let me just ask you about this. This is a this is a great itinerary. I built it, and they flex with me in in creating the itinerary here. Um, <clears throat> any questions or comments on this itinerary for the Israel only tour? It's eleven days, and a couple of those days are flying back and forth from the states to Israel. So about nine full days in. Israel, any questions or comments on this itinerary? Anybody? Hey, Dan, this is Jill. I do have a couple hey, just general questions. Well, sure, actually, one. Yep. Do we need visas or anything like that in our passports for these places? You need your passport, but you don't need a visa. Um, 
<clears throat> for none of the places you need a visa. We just did the Axon location tour in May and uh, we didn't need a visa. We did need COVID vaccinations, proof of the vaccination testing, but all of that is changing. The only place now that requires any kind of vaccination is on the cruise ship. Everybody else has lifted all restrictions. And we understand from the cruise lines that the COVID guidelines will no longer be followed next season. They're gonna finish the season, the tour season, up to the end of summer by maintaining the, uh, the guidelines, which means proof of vaccination and you have to wear a mask at all times, but everywhere else that's been lifted. It's not a problem. So we'll talk a little bit more about visas and money and all that kind of stuff near the end. So good question, Joe. So Dan, um, this is Mark. Uh, yeah, Mark. Are we traveling, tra crossing over to Jordan or staying just in Israel this time? Just in Israel only. Okay. Uh, we had talked originally about doing Jordan and Israel to go over into Petra and some other places. It was just a little bit too complicated, too complex, getting pretty expensive at that point. We decided to keep the Israel only tour only in Israel. Uh, there are other options for doing, you know, we could have thrown in a pre-Israel extension to Jordan, but the, the travel company was getting a little frustrated with the complexity of the itinerary and I decided just to, to backpedal just a little bit and keep it Israel only. Okay, thank you. You bet. Anybody else? Good questions. <clears throat> what is the elevation change at Masada? How, how tall is uh, it? Masada, uh, from, from ground up, when you're hiking up, it's a thousand feet. Okay, not bad. The elevation, well, maybe 1,200, <clears throat> about a thousand, I guess. The, the surface of Masada is right at sea level. The Dead Sea is minus 1,200 feet. So you're a couple hundred feet up to the base of Masada. And then in a very short amount of time, you're going at 11, you're going 1,000 feet up in the air. So the incline sometimes is you know rather steep. Uh, but it's, it's all, uh, there's, there's a lot of handrails. There's some steps. Uh, and when we visit Masada as a group, we're going to take the gondola or gondola, however else you want to pronounce it. And that just takes you straight up and it's an air conditioned ride and it's, it's pretty leisurely uh, compared to the hike. So, okay, anybody else on that one? All right, here's where we're going to go for acts on location. We're going to hit several countries, Israel, Turkey, Greece, Italy, and Vatican City. It's a sovereign nation. So Vatican City is there at Rome as well. So we spent our first couple of days in Jerusalem and Caesarea. I didn't put Joppa on the map because it was just getting a little bit crowded. But we fly into Athens, and then we fly up into Thessalonica. And then we, in the bus, hit uh, Amphipolis, Neapolis, Philippi. I'll come back to Thessalonica, drive. We're probably going to skip Berea, like the Bereans, uh, because it's it's uh, quite a drive, in the, and there's nothing archaeologically to see there. It's just, there's a mosaic that shows that the Apostle Paul was there, and that's the only thing that you can see there uh, at Berea. So we typically skip that and give us a little bit of extra time in Athens when we drive back down into Athens. There's a couple of other sites that we see in that region, like Matera, it looks like Meteora, you can pronounce it that way if you'd like to, but those granite columns that are coming up with the structures on top, if you've seen, I think it's For Your Eyes Only, the James Bond movie, uh, that's featured in, in the James Bond movie there as well. And then I would come back down into Athens, get on the cruise ship in the Aegean Sea for three days. Uh, we visit the island of Crete, uh, we visit Ephesus in Turkey, Patmos. We also visit Mykonos and Santorini, non-biblical sites, but absolutely stunningly beautiful. And to be on the cruise ship is wonderful. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you probably saw a picture that I posted of my office, which was out on the back deck. I had a little table there and my computer and just a perfect weather. And there's the Aegean Sea. And that's where I did a little bit of work when I was on vacation recently. So that was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Um, then we come back in to the land. We visit Corinth and Sincrea. We go over to Athens, up onto the Acropolis. Uh, we see 
uh, Mars Hill, the Areopagus, where Paul preached his message in Acts chapter 17. And then the next day we fly to Italy, uh, land in Rome or near Rome. And we visit uh, one of the ancient ports at the river there. And then we go into Rome and spend a few days there. We see the Colosseum. We see, we go into the Vatican City and we see the Sistine Chapel. We see some other ancient church buildings, uh, and not so much for the tradition that's associated with those churches, but to see the art that's there. Now there's, there's, of course, Rome is heavily Roman Catholic. And so there's a lot of things within those churches that are very meaningful to the Catholics, not so much to evangelicals or Protestants, but we still want to see those sites. The artwork is stunning. You'll see Michelangelo's Piata, where it's the, the carving of Mary holding Jesus after he had died. And the guy carved that thing out of a solid piece of marble at the age of 23. And you, you got to see it and you will. It's just, it's incredible. Um, Lots of other sites. You'll see the Arch of Titus, where carved into that column on the inside, you'll see the Roman soldiers taking away the articles, artifacts from the temple when they destroyed Jerusalem in the year 70. Just lots of biblical history, lots of tradition there as well. Uh, if you know the story of Martin Luther and the stairs that he used to climb on his knees and pray, as a lot of Catholics still do today, we'll see those stairs you'll see people climbing up on their knees and praying and doing those kinds of religious works. Uh, and then uh, when we're done with Rome, we get on the airplane and fly home. So that's the itinerary there. Now, so there's a couple of questions in the chat uh, or statements, comments in the chat room. I can't access that. Can somebody Get into that chat column and see if there's a question or, or a comment there that I need to. Yeah, to Dad, at. that was. I'm gonna turn my video off. <laughs> that was me. I just said uh, I remember James and Jill's uh, baptism. Oh, okay. And then uh, Alex said, "Would you please repeat the point where Acts on Location participants join in Israel?" Yes, absolutely. Great question. Be happy to do that. Um, so the the Israel only tour ends in Jerusalem. Joppa and Caesarea. So the Acts on Location tour begins in Jerusalem and then Joppa and then Caesarea. So there are three days, if I remember correctly, where those two tours overlap. So the group that does the Israel only, we're going to go from the Galilee over to Jerusalem. You'll take the bus, you'll go to the hotel and check in. I will probably go to the airport in Tel Aviv pick up the other group and bring them back to Jerusalem. <clears throat> you will be comfortable enough with the culture over there in Israel with our guide and, and just being together to be turned loose. And I'm just going to say, go into the old city of Jerusalem and just explore. We'll talk with you more about how to navigate your way through the city, the old city of Jerusalem. It's one square mile in size. So there's a little bit of size to it and it's very dense it's tight, narrow roads. It's incredible. You're going to love it. But the people there are very friendly. They can help you get to wherever you want to go. I will have provided for you. Here's what you need to see or what you need to do if you've got free time in the old city of Jerusalem. So there will be three days where those two tours overlap, and the group will be much larger. And then it gets uh, reduced a bit when the Israel-only group heads back to the states does that make sense got that okay any other questions on the acts on location itinerary okay here's a typical tour day uh the, the hotel will uh give you a wake-up call if you want that uh i i think it's always a good backup just in case, and you can set that wake up call for whenever you want it to be. Uh, six o'clock breakfast at the hotel, all the food is buffet style, uh, which of course is biblical. The apostle Paul said, I buffet my body, right? So it's, yeah, James, okay. I know it's gonna get worse once we travel and get tired, but it'll be, it'll be, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, can I ask something? Someone, yeah, uh, someone is not muted. Is there someone that can please mute their mic? 
Is there yep. like background music or something? Okay, good. Yeah, check your mics, make sure you're muted. It looks like someone on their iPhone. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep, yep, appreciate that. Eat breakfast, leave the hotel at eight o'clock. I have a rule when we, yep, somebody needs to mute iPhone. Dad, you can also mute them from your end. Uh, let's see if I can, I'm not sure. Let me see here. There, got him. All right. Can you see that screen there? Now I'm trying to find my button to get out of it. My cursor doesn't show up on my, there we go. Does my participants window pop up in front of you? You don't see that? Okay. I'm on the phone, but I can see the, the tour day. Okay, but you don't see a little window that lists all the participants in this meeting? I can Anybody? see that, yes. You can? Yes. Okay, let me try to get out of that. Not, not on the main screen. Okay, all right. Well, if your main screen looks like it should without any interruption in the middle of it, let's keep going forward, okay? All right. So, uh, so back to the eight o'clock leaving on, on the bus. Here's my deal. When it says we leave at eight, we leave at eight, which means you're on the bus early. The rule is if you're late on the bus, you buy chocolate for everybody for the next day. Okay. So you want to be on time. So um, what I have discovered is that people typically bring chocolate anticipating that they're going to be late, but they're usually on time. So that's just fine. We typically tour from eight to five. We take a break for lunch. <clears throat> we get back to the hotel sometime between five and seven. All these hotels are in safe locations. All these hotels are near enough to places that you can walk to if you want to do some more shopping, if you want to go to a little cafe, do some sightseeing. Usually the hotels have swimming pools. If you want to take a dip, sit in a hot tub, go swimming, just sit out in the patio, whatever you might want to do. It's a great way to relax and unwind. Uh, at this stage in life, I took naps <laughs> and then got up for dinner and then uh, hit the sack after dinner. So dinner is provided at the hotel. That's a part of the cost of the tour. Uh, your breakfast and your dinner each day, we'll look at more items regarding the cost in just a moment here. So here's some of the tour inclusions. And I'm going to see if I can't get rid of this screen again here. It's bothering me. I apologize for that. Got it. Okay. Uh, tour includes all flights and fuel surcharges. Now, the price has already been set. So fuel surcharges are going through the roof. I do not anticipate that the price of the tour is going to change. I hope it doesn't. Rick usually honors what he prints in terms of the cost of the tour. But if you've looked at flights and costs for flights recently, they're as high as gas prices are today. Jet fuel is expensive. We have top rated English speaking guides. Uh, Rick, he's a second generation owner of this travel company. His father pioneered travel to the Middle East, to the Holy Land. So Rick knows everybody in Israel. He gets us the best drivers, the best guides, the best buses, best hotels. And he he is just highly respected here in the States, actually globally. Uh, so he does really good in working it out for us. All of our buses are new, air conditioned with Wi-Fi, so you can stay connected. We talk more about that in our itinerary Bible studies. First class or superior hotels and safe locations, we want you to be comfortable. They're not, you know, five stars but they are really good, comparable. Well, in fact, in Athens, we stayed at, what was the hotel in Athens, Joanne? Marriott? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's Marriott Hype Hotels. Uh, so they're comfortable, they're good. Um, and then uh, breakfast and dinner each day, all taxes, all tips for the guides, the drivers, and the hotel staff. So here's, here's the thing. Theoretically, you can leave uh, your 
you know, Seattle, Dayton, wherever it is, there's Joanne. See Joanne there? Um, without any money in your pocket, and you're going to be okay. You'll be hungry at lunch, but, you know, people will be merciful and maybe share their falafel with you or something. So uh, you've paid in advance for all of these features here. I would, uh, I, I want to let you know this. Sometimes people like to compare tours online. You know, what are we getting? How much does it cost for this trip? How does that compare to other travel companies? Make sure you compare apples to apples. For example, you'll see some tours that are very similar that are a lot less expensive, but they don't cover fuel surcharges and they're gonna charge you for that later on. Some do not include tips or taxes. You have to pay that later on. I have actually seen tours with quotes that do not include airfare. So, all of that's a part of the package. You need to understand that, you know, what you're getting for the money that you're paying. And we want to keep it as easy and seamless as, as possible. So, all right, Carissa, what's the next chat comment that came up? I don't see it. Do you? I was trying to find my unmute. Okay. <laughs> Hi, mom. Um, I do not see any more chat comments. Okay. I just see a number four for the chance there. Okay. Is that Carissa? Yeah. Hi, oh, okay. Yeah, Carissa. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any questions on what comes with the tour? All right. Here's, um, let's see. How can, there we go. Well, let me back up here. Oh, all right. Here's something else that comes with it. Something I put together for you. Um, and it's, it's synchronized with their itinerary. Uh, it's a reading schedule on a site guide. So you'll know you if, if you want to get up in the morning and read about where we're going to be that day, this is this helps you with that. So day by day, based on our itinerary, read this scripture, and then you already have read about where we're going to be, which is really kind of an amazing uh, experience. Also in the site guide, I provide a little locator map so you know where in the country we are. It also will give you a brief uh, comment about the secular history and the biblical history that occurred at these locations. There will also be architectural renderings of what the ancient ruins used to look like when they were fully functional. Because you're going to see a lot of places that are that are in ruins. In Rome, you will see a couple of places that are still standing after 2000 years. You'll see, see the same thing in Athens, uh, but usually the places we go to, they've been, uh, they've been destroyed for one reason or another, invaders or earthquakes or tsunamis or whatever it might be. But there are biblical architects that have reconstructed what these buildings used to look like and you'll have images in the site guide there for you. All right, what is not included in the tour is your passport. You have to have a passport to travel internationally. If you don't have one, get one. Um, <clears throat> because even traveling or flying in the US, if you don't have an enhanced driver's license, you need a passport even to fly within the US. Those rules are changing. It's a security precaution. So it's not a bad idea to get a passport uh, last I heard, the processing time for a passport is about six months. So if you don't have a passport, get one. And you need to make sure that your passport is valid. I'll show you in a minute what the valid dates are for a passport. The tour cost does not include lunch each day, which is anywhere from $15 to $20, depending on what we're going and what we're eating. You spend a little more, you can spend a little less. But just consider that for planning and budgeting purposes. Travel insurance, uh, not required, but highly recommended. In our last tour, because of COVID, travel insurance was required. You could not get into Israel without travel insurance. And it's a good thing that we had it because two people uh, on our trip used their travel insurance. One lady had a medical situation and three days into the tour, she had to go back home. So you buy a one-way international ticket on the day that you're gonna fly and that's super, super expensive. 
but her travel insurance reimbursed her for that cost. And then another lady uh, on our tour came down with COVID. She was quarantined at that Marriott Hotel in Athens for 10 days. That was her expense. And then she needed to buy a one-way ticket home. She bought that, but she's getting reimbursed for all of that. So travel insurance is highly recommended. It's not required, but we suggest that you do. And it's about $750 for Dan and me to get the travel insurance. Yeah, for that one trip, it'll be more for the longer if you do both trips. So you go to, um, there's a website uh, I think you've got the information on there or the travel company will recommend it on the tour brochure, travel guard, or you can look for your own travel insurance. Your credit card might have you covered, check with your credit card company. Uh, you know, you might want to check with like AAA or something, or even your own medical insurance to see if they cover travel insurance, but make sure that you're well covered if you get, you know, hospitalized or you need to go home early or something to that effect. Okay, makes sense. All right, so here's the costs. Israel only, it's an 11 day tour. The cost is 5,097. The Axon Location Tour, which is 12 days, covers five countries. Uh, if you do the Rome extension, otherwise it's four countries. Axon Location is 5648. The three-day extension to Rome, which we highly recommend, is 1747. So the total for the full trip is 7395. That's a lot of money. It's a big investment. That's why we take the time to do the itinerary Bible study, provide these, the reading guide and the site guide for you. So you get the most out of this trip. What I want you to know before we leave is what you're going to see and how to experience it. You'll get the most out of the trip for that. So uh, everybody that did the Acts on Location tour with us in May opted for the Rome extension, uh, which is a good decision to make because you're already there. Uh, it, that's an expensive three days. The trip is about four to $500 a day if you do the math on it. But uh, when you realize, like when we flew, when we did our last trip, it was, I think, six or seven flights. You got the guide, you got the driver, the vehicle, uh, the uh, hotels, meals, entrance fees into all the archaeological sites, all the tips, all the taxes, fuel sur surcharges. Uh, it's, I think it's a pretty good deal. It's, and I don't, I've, I've heard many people say, on a lot of these trips, day one or day two into it, this is already worth it. I've already got my money's worth out of this trip. It's, it's totally worth it. So it's an investment. So we want you to you know, know that, of course. But here's, here's another option that a couple of couples uh, have taken or, or are taking, and that is to do Israel plus Acts plus Rome. So the total for that, you know, it, it gets up there. It's 12,492. But because there's some overlap, remember, on the Israel only and the Axel location, there's some overlap there. Uh, the travel company is going to discount the cost of that by $1,700, and which brings the adjusted price for 21 days at 10,792. If, if you break it down to what does it cost per day to travel on these trips? Uh, the most bang for the buck is when you combine all these three together and take the discount. Otherwise, uh, you know, it's 450, 460, something like that per day on the trip. Any questions on this page we're looking at right here? Everybody's tracking? All right. Pre travel prep. Here's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. First of all, your passport must be valid for six months beyond our return date. Now, this is the return from the Axon location in Rome. So this is the latest on that, uh, which means a valid passport expires after February 1, 2024. Check your passport. Make sure that it expires after February 1, 2024, because if it's not, you know, if you don't have that six month window, you're not getting on the airplane. You, you're not, you, you've paid for the trip. You're ready to go and you're going to get to the airport and say you can't get on the plane. You can't go. So you need to make sure it's valid for six months beyond a return date. 
And uh, I always get a copy of everybody's passport page because I double check it. I keep that with me uh, in case somebody loses a passport and it's happened um, that you're covered and taken care of, okay? Any questions on this pre-travel prep? All right, here's the, the, uh, the name of the travel insurance company recommended by our travel company, Travel Guard. You can go to travelguard.com and just punch in some info, just to, you can get a quote. They're gonna to wanna to know, when are you traveling? Where are you traveling? How much did you pay for the trip? And with the Axon Location Tour, because they're doing multiple countries, they wanna to know, to where are you traveling? Put down Greece, because that's where we're gonna spend most of our time. So you just say you're going to Greece and punch in your numbers for who you are and they're gonna give you a quote. There's gonna be several options. And people have asked, you know, do I get the, the highest option? Do I get the minimal or what should I do? And I think Joanne and I, we took- Minimum, uh, medium, the middle. The middle, the middle option, not the bottom one, but I think one up from that. And you'll see what it covers and what it doesn't cover. So, uh, Go there and just sniff around for a little bit. Okay, something that I do that I don't know if anybody else does this. I've talked to uh, guides. I've talked to others who lead tours. I've talked to travel companies. And uh, I've talked to the Israel Ministry of Tourism. And they say they don't know if anybody who's doing what we do with an itinerary Bible study. Uh, we preview not only how to travel, but what we're going to see and how to understand and interpret what we're going to see as we're traveling. And we do one meeting a month that leads up to the, to the departure time. So you see, there's just a basic introduction to the tour. This is for the Israel only, for example. And we start the series and we end the series on, on how to travel internationally. Some have not done that. And there are some questions that people have. There's some tips and some ideas that we want you to be aware of. And then we look at geography, empires, archaeology, and architecture, because you're going to see layers and layers and layers of history and civilization. You're going to stand in one spot. You will be able to recognize the Greek influence, the Roman influence, the Hebrew influence, the Egyptian influence. You'll see it with your eyes, and you'll, you'll just understand it without being told, okay, I know what I'm looking at. So I know that this is Greek, or I know that this is Egyptian, or whatever, because all those empires the Persians, the Muslims, and those kinds of things, built on the land, destroyed what was there, rebuilt what was on what was there, and uh, then it was destroyed and rebuilt. And you'll see that, you'll understand it. So we want you to have those basic kind of skills. And then January through the rest of the time, we we do a Bible study on these biblical locations like Beersheba, where Abraham went and and Doug as well, we talk about the Ramon Crater, what it is, how it was formed. Uh, we talk about Timna, Solomon's Copper Mines, how the Egyptians were there, what they did when they were there. We'll talk about the tabernacle and its significance for Israel wandering in the wilderness. And once they settled in the land, they had the, Ark, the uh, tabernacle in place for 400 years before the temple was built. So that was their place of worship, not in Jerusalem, but up somewhere north called Shiloh or Shiloh. Then we talk about a lot, which is the port city on the, the Red Sea. Uh, that's There's some biblical references to that. Then we talk about all these other places we're going to be seeing. So you'll have a good understanding of what you see once you get into Israel. Way back when I was in college and seminary, our pastor would, would take tours, take groups to Israel twice a year. He'd come back and he'd tell the stories and show the slides and things. And I thought, you know, I would love to go to Israel someday, but I'm so, so afraid that I was going to make this significant financial investment and get there and not understand what I'm looking at. And uh, what what's why is this important? Why are we even here? What is this we're looking at? And so uh, having been there several times, uh, I've been able to build up enough information and understanding to be able to help those who travel with me to be prepared for what they're gonna see. Now, I know that some of you have done that with me. The Stein camps have, and uh, Matt and Kareen have done that, uh, and others as well. And I, I think they found it to be helpful. So that's why we do that, Joanne. Questions? Yeah. 
What about those who are claiming to do Greece? I don't see Greece. Good question. There's an excellent. There's the next one. Acts on itinerary. Okay. Or acts, acts on location. So you're going to be itinerary. doing two? I'm going to be doing two. Two. Yeah. Okay. We will probably join together for the first one, introduction, itinerary, yeah. how to travel. And then we can even do the, we can even join together for geography, empires, archaeology, and architecture. But mm -hmm. then those who are going to Israel don't need to do the survey of acts. No. They can join in if they want to. No. Uh, so the first couple will, will combine. And, and there's a, there's other value to that as well. You kind of get to know the people that you're going to be traveling with um, when you do the itinerary Bible studies. So uh, some of the material is going to be duplicate, like Jerusalem, Israel Museum, and Caesarea, but the others are going to be uh, oh, okay. unique to the tours. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be a lot of work for me, but it'll be of great value, I think, to those that are traveling. Okay, any questions on the itinerary Bible studies? They're all going to be Zoomed. You'll have materials that I'll send to you in advance. We record these so you can go back and review them. Any questions? You can invite family, friends, enemies to join in. It's not a closed group. They're open to whoever wants to, to be a part of it. All right. So here's your next steps. Uh, get or renew your passport. Check your passport today. Jill, did you go check your passport when I was talking? Is that what you did? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I know Jill a little bit. <laughs> Good for you. All right. And then register for a tour. I think all of you are registered. You might not be. But register for a tour or both if you want to. Invite a friend. You will be surprised at who says yes. Yeah, we will go. That'd be fun. Let's do this. Uh, and sometimes people that we don't anticipate or don't think would be interested or able to do something like this, say, yeah, let's, let's do this. So just let them know, invite them, uh, use that link to let them download their own tour brochure and take a look at the itinerary and you'd be surprised. The trip is not closed to Christians only. I've traveled with non-Christians. Uh, I'm thinking about a friend who uh, was converted, was saved on the trip and we baptized him <laughs> in our street clothes because we weren't prepared for that. It was just a spontaneous thing. So Keith and I went down into the Jordan River in our street clothes and I baptized them and it was just a great experience. It was so much fun. Uh, I would encourage you, <clears throat> if you can, to make payments on the tour, chip away at it, reduce the balance that's owed. You don't have to do that. If you have the capacity to pay it off later and you want your money to be growing in the account, if it can do that these days, I'm not too sure. Uh, then, uh, you know, pay it off sooner. Uh, but um, you want to make sure that it's paid in full 90 days before we depart. And you will be contacted by the travel company. And they're going to remind you. They'll send you an invoice with a balance that is due. And um, they'll help you with that. Yes, Carissa? Um, I have a question about, I know for women, there were certain dress codes and certain holy sites. Are you yes. going to be talking about that during um, like one of those meetings? Yep. That's a part of that how to travel internationally question Carissa is talking about. In some of the cultures, there are holy sites where uh, sometimes men need to wear head covering. Sometimes women need to have their shoulders and knees covered. So we talk about how to do that. And the simplest way for the ladies is just to put a scarf in your backpack or your, you know, whatever you're using to carry or just stick it in a pocket or a purse or something and just wrap it over your shoulders when we're traveling. And we'll let you know the day before if we're gonna be going into the holy sites where knees need to be covered, shoulders need to be covered, our guide's gonna alert us to that. But we talk about the kind of clothing to bring, how to pack, uh, so all those ideas are covered, Carissa. That's good. Thanks. Okay, Victor, you have a question. You just wanted to show us something, an invoice? Yeah, I already have my, uh, got a copy of uh, the what the invoice looks like. Okay. Uh, and they show the balance, et cetera, how much has been paid. Very nicely done. Yeah. Cut that off, send the rest of the payment in. You're good to go. All right, good. I get updates from the travel company as well, and I can see that information. So 
um, it's it's good to um, to make that deposit and to be putting payments on that if you're able to do that. Uh, I would also suggest that if you if if you want to travel, make your deposit as soon as possible. It really helps us with our planning. Uh, we have, I think, 19 already who have paid deposits for the Axon Location Tour, which is great. We're off to a great start. I anticipate, I think there's another 12, at least 12, who have said, we're going, but I haven't seen the deposits yet. So my little response is, you know, show me the money. Uh, because lots of people want to go, but uh, not everybody makes that deposit on the trip. So you make a deposit, you make, you're, you're making a commitment uh, in showing us that, yeah, I'm interested enough and I'm committed enough to traveling that I'm going to put a deposit down on this. It really helps with our planning. Here's one of the things, because the travel company needs to reserve a block of seats on all the flights. And if, you know, 90 days out, 100 days out, 120 days out, whatever, you know, we've got 19, um, they're going to block less seats than if we had 30 or 40 people, obviously. So it really helps the travel company a lot with the number of hotel rooms we need, the size of our vehicle that we need, et cetera. We're going to cap it at 45 people because the buses will hold 52 to 55 people. We want to have a little bit of wiggle room in the vehicle itself, but I don't want to have multiple buses. It just becomes less intimate in terms of building group cohesion, building relationships, and uh, becomes more impersonal if you got groups traveling in different buses. So uh, if you're interested in doing both tours, uh, it's important to make your deposit for both to let the travel company know because there's some logistical challenges for them that they figured out how to overcome and but they need to mark that you you're going to be doing both tours and they can help you sort all that out uh, how the payments are made and so forth james and jill did a lot of communication with the travel company and they uh they forged that path for us so appreciate you taking one for the team there arrears that's good all right and then we want you to participate in the itinerary bible studies that's not required but you will not get as much out of the trip if you don't participate. Of course, as I said, we're going to record all those itinerary Bible studies. You can go back and look at them as many times as you need to. All the materials are made available to you. So uh, any questions on this? Uh, Dan. Um, yeah, Mark. Typically, your tours have been earlier in the year, July. Have you gone in July before? Is there any <laughs> special provisions to take along for the warmer yeah, weather, because yeah, I know Bonnie Mark. does not like the heat. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in July, and every time I do that, I'm going, "What was I thinking?" Um, here's why we're going in July, because you know, for example, my daughter's an educator, and she can't go in the springtime, which is the best time I think to go because she's teaching, and so there are other educators. Uh, there's there's one down in California who wants to travel with us. She just couldn't go if we went at any time other than the summer. So that's why we chose to go this time uh, in the summer. It's quite different because a lot of the landscape is is brown. You know, it's just dry and it gets hot. Uh, it'll be triple digits in some of the areas where we're going to be. Uh, when, when you think, when you want to know what is the climate of the Middle East, think Southern California. Uh, it's very much, they're basically in the same latitude there. You can go to websites and look at average temperatures and all those kind of things. And I provide that for you when we do our section on how to travel internationally because it affects the clothing that we wear. So the, the, it's, it's going to be hot. You're going to have to have a hat and you want to wear cool clothing and you want to stay hydrated. Those are the keys uh, and it'll be crowded. That's the busiest time of the year, believe it or not. Uh, but we, we know how to work crowds. We know how to stay together as a group. If we can keep goodness and mercy, you know, to follow us uh, closely, that's what we do. Uh, so there's water on the bus. 
you know, bottles of water, a dollar a piece. It's in a refrigerator there, so it's nice and cold. Uh, I would encourage you to, once you get there, maybe to buy just a large bottle of water and just refill that at the hotel and just keep it with you, stay hydrated all the time. There are places all throughout the tour where you can reload your water bottles. Um, you know, so just the hydration is the number one thing. So that's a great question, Mark. That's why we're doing it in July is because it opens the door for others to be able to travel with us. But it kind of comes with a price and it's going to be warmer. It'll be 100 degrees plus in a bunch of the places we're going to be visiting. Not everyone. Who knows? I mean, it's been raining in July here in Washington State. It's just like, what is going on? It's cloudy today. It's overcast. It's summertime. It's supposed to be bright and sunny, but it's not. Who knows? So. All right, good question, Mark. Anything else on that, Mark, or anybody else on this page? Joy yeah, you had mentioned that uh, you needed a copy of our pa passport. Will you be doing that at the airport, or can we send a copy of that to you? Yeah, you'll send a copy to me prior. Uh, make sure that we have that long before we take off. And once we work through the itinerary Bible study, we do our final Bible study, the, the final meeting two weeks before we depart. And at that time, I make sure that I have everything from you that I need. You have an address for to send that to? Yeah, I'll give you my email address. Uh, I sent you an email, I think. Victor, did you get an email from me about this meeting? Yes. Okay, you can just send it. You can just, you know, take a shot and just uh, send it to me on the email, and I'll just drop it in the folder for our group. All right. For the uh, Axon Location group, yeah. We'll talk about all sorts of different things we do. I know that James is quite the photographer, and... Uh, we share our photos with one another. Uh, when I put together a DVD of our tour, a, a souvenir DVD of our tour, we share one another's photos. Here's why. Because people are going to see things that you don't see. They're going to take pictures of things that you don't see. And when they take their photos, you're going to be in their photos. So you want copies of their pictures if you're willing to share those. We take a, we occasionally will take a group photo and we do that with one camera. And then we share that photo instead of like, 40 cameras or 40 phones. We just do one and done. We move on. So, all right. Anything else on this page here? I still have a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Joanne. Uh, I would recommend now that we're in July, put on your calendar uh, where where we you would be today hmm. and look at world what uh, temperatures. Yeah. Can you look at temperatures sure. for? Athens for oh, yeah. Thessaloniki and track it and just write it down. So when you're packing, you'll kind of know, you know, if it's a rainy season or I, I don't know, but yeah. I, I think I'll do that. Yeah. Just to, then you, then you kind of know Good. what it's like over there. Good. All right. Good comment. Other questions. One question that people often ask is, is it safe? I mean, we're going to the Middle East, right? Yeah, and the answer is yes, it's safe. Uh, especially after COVID, those who survive on tourist money want you to come to their country. All the shop owners, hotels, restaurants, guides, drivers, airport personnel, they want you to come to their country. And so what they also want is for you to have a fun, safe experience in the country. Here's the reason. Because if the news gets out that a tourist was injured in their country or in a city or something, tourism slows down or stops. Um, even in Israel, the Arabs and the Israelis, you know, there's, there's been a lot of tension over the millennia with those groups. But there is this professional courtesy, so to speak, where they... The Jews want you to have a good experience in the Arab country, Arab sections, and the Arabs want you to have a good experience in the Jewish sections. Because if, if there's a problem in either one of those sections, both sides lose. Both families go hungry, so to speak. So there, I have seen times, and we'll talk about it once we get into the itinerary, where a guide will get a phone call early in the morning saying, it's not best for your group to go to this particular region because there's going to be a problem. And so they, they divert us away from where they have been told there's going to be a problem, whether it's going to be a demonstration or something to that effect. Occasionally you hear about Americans in Israel or in other places who are injured or killed 
but it's never with a tour group. These are people who go by themselves, go into places where tourists typically don't go and run into some problems there. You, you may have heard or read or saw recently that at Ramadan, there was there were issues of rock throwing from the Temple Mount area down into the Wailing Wall where the Jews were praying. Um, that always happens. And so groups just don't go to that area of, of the old city of Jerusalem because there's gonna be a problem. They know there's gonna be a problem, so they just stay away from that. So if, if there is any escalated threat, uh, first of all, the US government's not gonna let you travel. Uh, secondly, the, the tour company is not going to let you travel. And then the Israel Ministry of Tourism is going to keep you out of harm's way and other countries as well. The last thing they want is for any tourist from any place to be injured or even killed. So uh, it's it's safe. You know, we've been many times and we're still here and we're going back again. We, we love it over there. So, all right. Any other questions or comments about anything? Really? All right. Well, if not, then uh, let me see if I can get out of this here. I'm trying. Did I try? Okay. There we go. Thanks for organizing all this, Dad. I bet. You're welcome, Carissa. All right. So, um, okay. Your next steps, check your passports. If you haven't registered and you wanna go, register, sign up. Invite friends, invite family, let them know that you're going, you want them to join you. And at any time, if you have any questions, you know, get a hold of me, give me a call, send me a text message, an email, or whatever it might be. So um, any, any questions before we officially turn it off? Uh, last one, Dan. Anybody can join your itinerary classes? Anybody. Yes, they're wide open to whoever wants to join. Just if they want to learn about the area, because you do a good job of those classes. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, anybody certainly is welcome to do that. All right, Alex, I saw Janice walking back and forth a little bit there. Janice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A star kind of pop in and out. Right. Okay. Hey, I'm going to stop recording and we're going to shut down. It's really good to see all of you and we'll stay in touch. Uh, let it, let me know if you have any questions, sign up, make payments, invite others and uh, we'll have a great time. Okay. All right. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Stay out of trouble. All right. We'll see you around. Adios.